Hello and thank you for watching. In the last video I discussed the natural habits and behaviours of the house mouse, Mus musculus, as the wild ancestor of fancy or pet mice. In the first video of this series we focused on the needs for rodents to gnaw, have somewhere to hide and their desire to build nests. In this video I want to focus on the natural social structure of mice and how this translates to how we should be keeping them. In the wild, both around human habitation and further afield, house mice are extremely social with frequent interactions with both both the same and different genders. And this interaction behaviour is also varied over the seasons. When the population of mice is relatively low in an area, males will set up home territories with two or three females. Females will cooperatively raise young and males known to the females don't pose a risk to those infants. However, males in trying to maintain their territory are highly aggressive to intruder males, especially during uh, periods of peak breeding, so during the spring and summer. When the pups are born, females will stay around for some time and may stay with their mother, or they may disperse and form their own groups with other females and a new male. The males will be chased off by the father, dispersing and setting up their own territories. Occasionally males will set up territories with a brother or stay with their father. In the wild however this is relatively rare. Males don't often hold on to a harem of females for very long, often being dethroned by an intruder male. Females will form close bonds with their male, however when in uterus they will be willing to mate with any available male, and in turn they then become a bonded group. There are some interesting exceptions to this, most notably during a massive increase in the population during, for example, plagues. During this time, the aggression that would normally be seen between mice is almost completely absent. And this is because there are so many other mice that if a mouse still exhibited the um, normal levels of aggression, there would be constantly exhausting injuries and fighting. In pet mice, we need to be mindful of these natural behaviours. Females need to have companionship and in general groups of between three and five work very effectively. It has been noted previously that even in female groups if there are more than around eight they will split into two separate groups and if this is allowed to happen in a large enough environment the two groups will take on different smells and will then fight competitively over resources. I have never witnessed this happening um, and I have had groups of larger than eight when there's been um, a litter of predominantly females um, but generally my mice are kept in smaller groups than that. In males things can be a little bit more complicated. Male mice are naturally territorial and for that reason for a long time male mice have been advised to be kept singularly. The problem with this is that their territorial nature conflicts with their social nature. When females are kept alone, they have a tendency to fail to thrive, not eating a lot, not interacting and just slowly sort of fading away. Males, on the other hand, do have an ability to live alone. However, I've noticed that you have similar issues as to that with females. They, they tend to be less interactive with you as the owner and tend to be um, a bit fussier when eating and just tend to be a lot more um, jumpy and timid and, and skittish. For this reason, when there are any other options, I would lean towards those first. So what are the options? Well, if males are from the same litter and are raised together in pairs or trios, they will often go on to live very happy, peaceful lives together as adult mice. If males are neutered, they can be placed in with groups of females. And finally, if there is a female who is known to be sterile, she can be paired with a male. There are some drawbacks to each of these options here. Males, even brothers, can live together for many, many months and then start to fight. And this can lead to serious injury and even death if they aren't separated. From my personal experience, I have had groups of males that have been raised together and lived together and lived together harmoniously until one of the males, in fact the um, father of the group, became unwell. I think what was happening there is that he was the dominant male and when he began to um, fall ill because of age complications, it upset the natural balance that had occurred in that group. Basically the son saw a chance to be the dominant male, but to do that they had to decide which one of them would be dominant. And as they all wanted to be the dominant male, in that cage or in that group, it led to excessive fighting. 
on the flip side of that, I have had males that were from the same litter that have lived together throughout their entire life, um, actually being separated at one point to be involved in breeding and returning to living together. It was a, a risky option. However, I had a tough decision. I had two older males that used to live together, but that I couldn't guarantee would live together going forward. I had an older male that would definitely live with his sons for now, but I could have a group disintegrate as I'd had previously. Um, but that would leave me with two adult males that were alone. So I decided to do something that I wouldn't expect many breeders to attempt. I introduced the adult males to each other and I was amazed at the instant recognition and that gave me hope and to my surprise it did very very well um neither i don't have either of those males any longer um this was some time ago and they were quite old um however they moved back to living together in a cage full time but there you go there's there's my experience of uh, male groups so the the other option uh, is going to be neutering and that's going to ensure there are no accidental litters However, there are also some issues uh, with this option in that most vets are unwilling to do such an operation um, because of how small mice are. And those vets that would consider doing so are often very, very expensive. Now, it's a difficult conversation to have, but I think it's worth having. Clearly, we want to do what's right for our pets. But as an animal, and a pet that can cost as little as a, a you know three quid to buy and the cost of neutering can go into the hundreds of pounds it doesn't make a lot of sense for most people i would say that most pet owners if they want multiple mice will choose female mice or if they specifically want males for any reason they will often get them in those small groups from the same litters If you're a breeder of mice, you don't tend to want your males neutered um, because obviously that, that removes them from your possible gene pool at a later date. So do I think neutering is a, a viable option for most scenarios? No. I don't think it's something that most people look at as a viable option. Do I think it would work if it was um, a lot less expensive? Possibly. Um, especially if you have a group of males that begin to fight, if you could sort of neuter them and, and nip it in the bud. But it's certainly not an option as it stands at the moment. Now, the final option is, in my opinion, even more risky. And that's if you have an unmuted male um, placed in with a female that's believed to be sterile. I would be on the side that if you have a male in with a female, assume that there are going to be pups. And further if you have a female that is very old and that's the reason for for low fertility do realize that if she becomes pregnant it could be a death sentence both to her and any pups that she might um, attempt to raise so i don't personally use that method um i do have one female with a medical condition that basically means that she is completely unable to fall pregnant as she doesn't have um an open cervix or vagina so in mice um, the urinary papilla where they wee from um, is separate um, from the vaginal opening and in this uh, instance the opening didn't develop so mice are born without vaginal opening and it begins to develop as they age around sort of two weeks it's relatively rare and the causes behind it are, are relatively poorly understood. It is thought that with inbreeding, the occurrence increases. However, it's also known to happen spontaneously in lab colonies. So it's not something that I would actively choose to breed for. The, the complications on the female just are um, quite unpleasant and therefore, in my opinion, unjustified. So for this reason, with my males, if they've been a previous breeder and they will happily live with their sons, then I like to keep at least one male, normally that I'll use in future breeding, so they can live together. So I will have a father and a son. If it works well, it's 
wonderfully successful and you can see the benefit that it has for the males to have that company. If it doesn't work out, and it doesn't always, then I keep my males alone. Often by the time they've bred for me, I don't need them for any future breeding, but I can't always be sure, and they would then be of an age that would increase the risk of attempting to neuter them. So in that instance, I keep them alone. When I'm offering males for sale, I offer them in groups of two or three. They need to have come from the same litter and been living together without any issues. This can limit the choice that people have in terms of which mice I have available. If I have a, a group of babies that for whatever reason they're all um, white offspring and a group of males that are all grey offspring and they were too far apart in age for me to combine the litters, it would need to be two or three males that are grey and two or three males that are white. They wouldn't be able to um, be combined. Those that for whatever reason aren't getting on um, with others are separated and would need to be kept singularly if I'm not keeping them myself. So when someone wants to buy any of my mice, I like to know about their previous experience that they've had. If they've never had mice before, I recommend either singular males or a group of females. The only reason is that mice will fight occasionally and, and squabble, but you need to know the difference between that behaviour versus a real fighting or bullying situation. Something that's easier to recognise if you've had mice before and accustomed to their behaviours and to the sort of sounds you'd expect. Um, as a general rule, if blood is drawn, then it's too far. So it really does take some nuance and experience to kind of see the difference. So in terms of um, the, the social needs of mice, it is a very complex um, discussion to have. It's not something that we can easily decide one way is right and one way is wrong. I've read lots of um, arguments going back and forth uh, around this subject and I think it comes down to what you're willing to risk basically. We've all probably experienced some form of quarantine recently and there is I think a greater understanding of how being alone and being bored and without engagement and without things to do can can really wear on you mentally and physically and my opinion is that a male mice living alone is like somebody living alone during lockdown not awful certainly you know um, they get food they can play they can drink they're safe from predators but sometimes you need something more than that that social interaction and so I tend to lean on the side that I would prefer to try it and see that it doesn't work out than not have tried. In other places that I've read, I often read the statement, why would you risk it? Why would you risk your mouse fighting? Why would you risk them injuring each other or hurting each other or even possibly killing each other? And that is a, a very good question and there's no right or wrong answer to that. For me, I prefer knowing that I've given it the best shot that I can so that they're not alone. Do I know what the right answer is for everyone? No, absolutely not. I think it is something you need to decide for yourself. I think we all want the best for our pets and I don't think anyone um, would be watching these if we hated mice. So just be kind would be my suggestion. I do hope you've all enjoyed the video and uh, I look forward to making more in the future. Thank you for watching. Females will form close blondes, blondes, wow, tend for the, oh she's still going.